Watch your cartoons. He watches Johnny's bite. If you go to work, I will watch my cartoons. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, eh? Johnny, hmm. here I want you to join the crusade. I've watched you. You know, I've watched you. Sometimes our people disagree with you, but hmm. I mean, I understand some of your approach. I mean, hmm. sometimes we take a hard bite. Hmm. It helps us as politicians. Hmm. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Maybe, hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa. You know, Papa. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what you used to fan mm. uh, 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 charcoal. Mm. <laughs> you, right. you, you've seen it. Right. right. When right. you fan it, then the charcoal bright red. This is a, uh, it's 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 a core for accountability. <laughs> <laughs> you fan government's charcoal. Mm -hmm. It's bright it's, red. It's a core for accountability. I enjoy it. I think literally and figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it pricks the conscience very quickly and sharply. So certainly a fantastic avenue for a great editorial and one that literally wakes us up. This is our society right. and it will take me and you mm. to do it. That's why I always watch Johnny's Bite. <laughs> the general watches Johnny's Bite. Very, every day. Thank you very much. And I is devoid of insults, mm -hmm. but straight to the point, mm. factual, and fearless. What he seeks to do is to bring attention to some of the ills or some of the problems that we have. Mm. And um, even though it's often very spicy, I was telling mm. him that he could add some ketchup on the side. Oh, you should add some ketchup. It's too hot for <laughs> oh, you, too eh? too hot. I don't get surprised when people criticize you. But I think you are doing a good job. Thank you, sir. And don't at all think about what people will say. Continue with the objective work that you are doing, and definitely it will help this nation because you are not doing it for yourself. But what Ghanaians cannot say is what you are saying. Hey, Charlie, no be joke. You know, the pressure joke. people like Johnny can give you. No, no, you know, get gray hair, you I'm, get gray hair. I'm, I'm and <laughs> that's what I'm saying that the pressure Johnny and his people. <laughs> the pressure they can give you, you know, get gray hair, you go get. So, your best bet is not mm. to have hair. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasban Allah wa Nima Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup of overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell. In the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. The Eid was fantastic. I heard a lot of people, um, I saw a lot of people enjoying. I had occasion to send a message to one of my old time friends and I said, Hi, Alaji says, My mother has counted the meat. Before I could speak, he was telling me that his mother had counted the meat. But that's not a conversation. It's just to tell you that times are tough. And times are tough to the extent that people are talking. Miss G is talking, uh, Miss V is talking, uh, Sakodi is talking, KKD is talking, everybody is talking. It's not just people ideally within the space you find within the news and current affairs political space who will be complaining. Because the problem is that town is really, really tough. Your fuel consumption, your food, your clothing, accommodation, which is the biggest killer. And government is not even mentioning the saying anything aside all the swords that have been cut and all the projects that have been launched. Government is not mentioning anything about the promise it made to young people in this country that will pay your rent in a second term. <clears throat> the second term has been halved. And we have not even mentioned to the young people that we promised that we we're going to pay your rent. So when the young people don't trust you, it is because you have set up yourself not to be trusted. And I heard the president talk about the 30% pay cut. By all means, it's laudable. By all means, very, very laudable. But I said, Mr. President, the only way you can win back public confidence and trust, Boston, is to set up a separate account. Do the 30% deduction. Show us where the money is going. Show us the specific project you're using the money for. Let the people follow the money. Let the people audit the money together with you and follow it. 
<clears throat> and then they will trust you. Until that time, any and everybody, including your good self, your appointees can come and tell us, oh, my salary is being cut, my salary is being cut. The people don't trust you anymore. And they don't trust you because some are even asking you to show your pay slip. How much were you earning in the past? And how much are you collecting now? And where is the money going? For me, that's my point. Where is the money going? Because if you earn 2,000 cities and your 2,000 cities has been cut by 30%, where is the money going? As soon as we are able to demonstrate this, the questions of strike, 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 it will stop. Public services workers, you know, they, they, they have uh, given ultimatum. They are going on a strike. Uh, uh, Tewu is here. Nagrat is here. Nat is here. This is here. Everybody is going on strike. Nurses have indicated that they will also go on strike. Everybody is going on strike. So, Mr. President, I want to assist you. As I always say, I can't teach you how to govern. But how your governance affects me, I can say. And I'm saying that what your people around you may not be telling you, Bosu, is that on the ground, you have lost trust and public confidence. No doubt about it. Especially when elements within the government say, we will never go to IMF, we will never go to IMF, and eventually you have gone to IMF, IMF is still in town. Check with even your party membership. They are broken hearted. Yet is a as we are Yet is a on here, or may you hear mine. That's when I'm a mamma boniti, a comedian. A yamamu bonin a woman. Sometimes you just don't want to do the, you know, the blame game, try to bring back the receipts. But sometimes you cannot help it because the people are going on strike. Exactly because they don't trust the government. When the government tells them there's no money and they see that the government is living large, they find it difficult to understand. Your children in your secondary schools do not have food to eat. You denied it that what we were saying was wrong. You are now going to fix it, which is akin to what happened when the tomato importers told you that, oh, they are being robbed. You say, oh, there's no insecurity. They are not being robbed. And then you pass back and tell IGP upon Boeni to go and provide security for them. And then when he's finished, he comes to tell us that he has provided security for them. So who are you deceiving? When we say some of these things, we don't say them because we hate you. Because me, if I hate you, I will not get anything out of it. It will not add a, a kilo of, uh, of, 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 of my kinky, the weight of my kinky. It will not add anything. But it is because people have lost trust in you. That's why. And you see, your children don't have food to eat, but you are busy constructing a cathedral with illegally, uh, illegally sourced money. It is plain thievery that the money is for the state, that you are in government, not just you all of you, finance minister, everybody else, that you know that you and I cannot just go into any public funds to go and use it for what we want. Save we have parliamentary approval. And then we take money. Children cannot find food to eat. And then we collect money and say we are building cathedral. We go and break down buildings, dig the ground, go to Israel, import a stone, come and dump it there. And you have men of God in this country supervising that. So those same Papa and Mama, the, the men of God that we value and cherish, who are seeing wrong but are not saying it, and I saw a documentary flying around. When I sit in front of them in the chapel, in the church, and they are preaching a sermon about being an upright citizen, can they look me in the eye and preach to me? Can they look me in there? Because they are the ones who tell us that we should be honest. We should be this. They'll quote Proverbs. They'll quote Psalms. They'll quote uh, whatever. All of it. I'm saying that those same men of God that we, we revere so much that these are the oracles of God's eye and all of that. And they lead us to God. The children are hungry in the schools. And the situation had pertained for a long time. We are now making a pledge that today we will solve the problem. But I'm saying we are busy constructing a cathedral. That we are told that we don't have money. But we are building a cathedral. I'm not against the construction of a cathedral. By all means. But you need to be alive to worship God in the cathedral. School feeding for children. 97 pesos. We are asking for it to be raised. 97 pesos. What can they buy? 
And Jesus left us with two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. How do we love our neighbors? The children are our neighbors. The children in the primary schools, the basic schools are our neighbors. The children in the secondary schools, they are our neighbors. Now their PTA chairman are the one complaining. And you see, so when you tell people that you don't have money and you are using the money to do everything else that the people are asking you, stop. And you don't stop. How do you expect that people who are demanding for cola, 20%, because now you have shared your responsibility as a state after you made the promise and a whole lot of noise that you're going to take care of their children. So as parents, every week, something they had not planned for, they have to now cook what we call home cho and take it to go and give to their children in school. And they include teachers, they include nurses, they include doctors, they include lawyers, they include all classes of people. The food that they cook week on week to go and give to their children, they will use money to, to procure them and prepare them. And we all know what the cost of food has now become on our markets. Mm -hmm. Forget about all the jargons that, oh, we're planting for food. And, where, where is what we planted? Go and check Namibia. They are exporting meat to the world. We are here planting for export and rural development. We can't even find food to eat. So the, the same parents you're asking to be considerate of government are the same parents forking out money from their pocket to go and feed the children that you are supposed to be feeding, that you have told us that you're going to use the annual band, uh, uh, budget funding um, uh, uh, account of support for, or all your resources for. You, you're the same person who has said that. So you see where the dynamics are. In one breath, you're asking them to sacrifice. But in the other breath, they are, they are being pressed down. Not shaking together, not running over. They are being pressed down and trampled upon. And I hear information that over 3,000 <coughs> customs division officers of the GRA could be going on a strike if things are allowed to go the way they are going presently. You heard me? 3,000, over 3,000 customs division GRA. They will embark on a strike if things are, are not... Are not looked at properly because our deep-throated sources of information are pointing to the fact that both senior and junior officers of the custom division of the Ghana Revenue Authority are threatening to embark on a nationwide sit-down strike. What are their issues? Promotion. And they say it is due for them to be promoted, but they are stuck. And there are other matters of grave concern which have not been given the needed attention by management of GRE. They have tried and tried and tried. That's what they're saying. If they lied, I lied. But these are the officers themselves talking. And you know because they work in a regimental space, they can't come out to speak. And some of these officers have been denied promotion for almost a decade. Ten years. He has worked. No promotion. What kind of, what kind of, <laughs> I mean, people start off even as assemblymen, then they become unit committee people, and then the next point they become presiding uh, 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 members of the assembly, and then the next time you see them as parliamentary candidates, the next time you see them in parliament, and then the next time they are ministers. People have a certain route. In fact, some of them even start from uh, nooks and gaps and uh, genoops and all of those places. They are, they are threatening to go on a strike, senior and junior officers. Now, why did the GRA management, for example, together with the Ministry of Finance, under who uh, the, the GRA is, fix an outrageous pass mark of 70%, 75% respectively? That's what they're asking. That they have written the so-called promotion exam because they say they are looking at their, their friends within the other security services, like police and prisons, fire service, who are usually promoted automatically, if you will, with their intake members. And they are saying that when it gets to attend, we are customs division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, but you ask us to take a certain interview and write a promotional exam, fair enough. But when you want to change the pass mark for the exam, what kind of conversations went on? And is that the reason why we are refusing to promote the officers, even though those uh, who outscored the minimum pass mark of 70 and 75 percent due to what they learned as a result of some unscientific and baseless uh, vacancies declared by the head of the human resource department. That is what the senior officers are saying. And they say that they are severely demoralized. Yes, severely demoralized. And I'll tell you the financial implication if they go on a strike shortly. 
These guys are the ones who work at the port. We all know that your port is, the, is about the biggest place where you get all the money. Demorage, import duty, blah, 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 all of those ones. They form an integral part of mobilizing money for this country. And then they form an integral part of also providing security. Because as you can see, this is the customs division of the They are the ones who wear the uniform and sometimes carry arms. You get to the ports, you get to the borders, you find them. So they are an integral part of our security structure. They are an integral part of our revenue generation machinery. We cannot make them sad. They prevent people from smuggling illicit goods across the borders, our cocoa issues around the Ivory Coast area. We're talking fertilizer around the, the northern part and other places. All those things, they contribute to trying to fix it. And the question they're asking is, why have you set outrageous pass marks, 70 to 75%? And even those who have passed those 70 to 75%, you have failed to promote them for a decade. That's the allegation they are making. And I'm asking you, is it true? If it is not true, GRA, speak now. Remy Amishadai, speak. Mr. Kedron Ferrata, speak. Kedron what good morning to you. Speak. Because this will come at a time when the country is in dire need of rev revenue, resources. IMF is in town. We are literally begging. Ghana Beyond Aid is begging. And on the back of the threats posed by terrorism in the sub-region, a grave concern like this. It, it should not happen that they will even decide for 30 minutes to do a sit-down strike because it will have an implication on our security, it will have an implication on our revenue generation, it will have an implication on how we secure our borders in this country. So we must not make them angry. I say a sit-down strike is looming. And the same thing happened at the beginning of the year when the teacher union started threatening. We didn't look at them. The UTAG Fire is not dead completely. If you know what they talk, they say among themselves, you will shake. The Public Services Workers Union conversation is coming up. There are four teacher unions. You see how it's stretching? And we are forgetting that the children are at home. They are losing contact hours. They are losing all of it, plus textbooks that are not available. Now, another intriguing issue, bordering the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, is a failure, a failure of the GRA, that's the allegation, to adhere to the Supreme Court ruling on SEPs versus National Labor Commission and the Public Services Workers Union of Trade Union Congress, as well as the Ayimbire. You remember that Ayimbire versus Attorney General and uh, that case, 2015, 2013, 2013 first, and then that was 2015, in which the Supreme Court barred customs officers from forming or joining labor unions. You know why? Because in the wisdom of the court, that's a security uh, uh, institution. And if you allow them to form unions, they become like Utah, they become like Tehu, Nagrat, they will have dire consequences. But despite these judgment, the GRA is said to have ignored calls from the Custom Staff Association to stop deducting labor union dues from salaries of customs officers for the benefit of the Public Services Workers Union and the Ghana Revenue Authority Workers Union. Why? There's a court order. So why are you making the deductions? And this is a situation where they are informed, has led to the association to file a writ in the high court. A writ has been filed at the high court to enforce this judgment since 2020. Let's go to the financial implications. If they decide to go on a strike, for example, how much it will cost us? All the conversations that are going on. If they decide to go on a strike, how much will it cost us? The GRA Customs Division is supposed to cost about 900 million a day. That's what they are supposed to cost. So uh, the, the secular signed by the National Secretary of the Customs Staff Association, great, uh, those conversations, we can have them. But I'm saying, how much does it cost if they decide to go? Quickly, I, I refer to, to my notes here. How much it costs us? Because we cannot allow these things to happen. The moment we decide to allow it to happen, we will be in trouble. It will be a big blow to the government. If they sit loot for customs officers to embark on this nationwide strike of any form. So on the average, a daily revenue that customs division of the GRA mobilizes is 984.18 million Ghana cities. 984 million Ghana cities. The Ghana Revenue Authority targets that in 2022, we're going to get 80.3 billion this year. So 980, keep the figures in mind. This year, annual target is 80 billion in excess. 
The total target that customs is supposed to collect is 20.5 billion. So now, the remaining to be collected by the DRTD, that's what they call the Domestic Tax Revenue Division, both VAT and IRS, okay, is, is supposed to be generating this amount of money. So when they decide to go on strike, even for a day, over 900 million. And given the way we have handled uh, labor agitations, well, they are not labor, but given the way we have handled some of these things, people say, oh, we are not happy. These are issues. You are not promoting us for 10, 10 years. Uh, we are not happy about it. We see our other colleagues in other security services rising steadily. You are not um, addressing the key issues. You are still deducting labor uh, union dues from us, even when the courts have said, don't do that. And the things are boiling and looming, and we keep quiet like we have done. And now when they, they eventually go on strike, we say, hey, why are you going on strike? You are bad. Then we call uh, senior citizens to come and tell them, oh, treat it with the humanitarian face. Please go back. You know the government is broke. No, no, no. Government is broke, but our president is flying luxurious jet. He flies around in a luxurious jet to come and tell us that we are broke. So your, your children are hungry. You tell them that there's no money. But you go to the car rental shop, rent a V8 when your children are not eating. You roam town. When you finish, you come back and come and remind them, hmm, we are broke. Oh. Then you have people defending and telling you that should the president have walked, should he have used the canoe, should he have used the donkey? The insult. The insult because the president had at one point flight commercial. Did that change the value of work you went to do there? So, Mr. Kenoforiata, good morning to you. Put your house in order. Reverend Amisha Dai, good morning to you. Put your house in order. Ken Adamwa, good morning to you, sir. Put your house in order. And I hope this will not be allowed to blow out, be blown out of proportion. I hope this will not be allowed to go off. Because if this goes off, as I've explained to you, the daily revenue, if they decide to even do one day, just one day, just one day, we just return from an holiday. We like holiday in this country too much. And we know how much we lose every day when we have an holiday. Now add the fact that these customs division uh, members of the GRA, because they are not happy about the key issues they have spoken about and nobody is paying attention to them, they decide to go on strike. Sandy Baba, good morning. Welcome to NLA 590 Mobile. Today, we will discuss how you can win cash by playing 590 on your phone or online. Visit 590mobile.com.gh or dial star 959 hash on any handset or network and choose option 6 on the menu for Perm 2. Perming allows you to increase your chances of a winning combination. Perm 2 gives you 240 times your stake amount when two or more numbers from your selection appear in any order. You need to select from 3 or up to a maximum of 10 numbers or between 1 to 90 to play Perm 2. Thank you for your attention. And remember, you can stake your favorite NLA 